to the message this morning. There's a lot of things I'd like to share, but I know I probably won't be able to share all of it for time's sake. But, but I'm hoping that you leave here today with something. Amen. I hope you leave here encouraged because just know that, you know, whatever it is that you may be dealing with today, you know, is not too big for our God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to understand that God has created a system to help you and I. But see, oftentimes we don't take advantage of God's system or we don't take advantage of the tools he's provided us to, you know, to handle the everyday struggles and obstacles that life may throw at us. So we got to learn how to use these tools that God has provided for us. And we're going to take a look at some of those today. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 1. And as you're turning there, I want to just open up in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we dedicate this time to you. Lord, we ask you to help us to have a listening ear, an open and receptive heart to hear from you today through your word. We thank you for your word, Lord. Speak to us. Give us a greater understanding and revelation of your goodness so that we can use it and apply it in our daily lives. Oh, Lord, we lift you up and we give you glory and honor in the precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. A couple of things I want to point out before we get into the book of Hebrews, which will be in chapter uh, 1. You know, when Jesus, you know, this Christmas season, before he was, uh, uh, or before he came to this earth, as before God came to this earth as the man Christ Jesus, you know, he used a vehicle to set this all up. And he used the same vehicle to usher him when he left planet Earth after he went to the cross. And we're going to look to see what this vehicle was. What was it that God used to send Christ Jesus to planet Earth? What was it that he used to take the Lord Jesus and escort him back? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. The word says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? This is out of the New King James Version. Let me give you uh, out of the New Living Translation, and I'll explain what we're looking at. In the New Living Translation, in Hebrews 1.14, the word says, Therefore, angels are only servants... Spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. That's the New Living Translation. See, we're going to take a look at angels today. Angels, right, are spiritual beings that God has created to do what? We just see it here. To serve mankind. See, in the New King James Version, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits we've already established and looked at the definition of what that word minister and ministering means it means to serve it means to serve when you hear the word ministry all it means is it's just something that serves other people and the word tells us here that angels are here to serve to serve who mankind right what? Angels are here to serve us? We're going we're to look at some other scriptures to put this all together so you have a, a better understanding. You know, because I'm going to share this with you, and I'm not here to uh, throw stones. I'm not, I'm not here to, to uh, you, know, uh, you know, do anything other than to educate and encourage. But there's a misconception when it comes to angels. Some people think that when we die, we become angels. There's nowhere in the Bible that supports that belief. But I know that some people believe that when a loved one passes away, that they're now their angel looking over them. Believe that all you want, that's fine. Like I said, that's what you want to believe. But nothing scripturally supports that. And I'm going to show you some things from the Bible to support what, angels actually are doing for you and I, right? So when we die, we don't become angels. 
God uses angels to fulfill a purpose for him. Another misconception is that Satan is a fallen angel. Satan is a, was a cherub. This is a type of spiritual being. There, there are many types of spiritual beings that God has created to do his work. He's created cherubs, he's created seraphims, he's created angels, and they're all a little bit different in what they do. The Bible even describes them as even looking different. Some of them have uh, multiple sets of wings. Some of them have multiple faces. You ever heard of somebody saying, hey, are you two-faced? <laughs> right? So when it comes to angelic beings, or excuse me, spiritual beings, right, they all have a different purpose and sometimes even look different. I'm going to show you a scripture in a little bit that talks about how even some angels even look like you and I. No wings. No multiple faces. Right? That's why we got to read our Bible so that we can get educated and understand these kinds of things. The other thing is that if angels are created are, to be ministering spirits, then if they're supposed to, they were created to serve you and I, have we been putting our angels to work on our behalf? I know I have. My angels are working overtime. Because I put them to work. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And how you can put your angels to work. If you don't ever give them no work to do and don't give them no, no assignments to do, they're not going to do anything. So it's, it's like your kids at home. You know, it's like you have chores for them to do, but if you don't tell them what you want done and explain to them, it's not going to get done, right? And then you've got to check on them. Did you do your chores? Let me go check, right? So we've got to follow up, amen? Okay, so we were just in Hebrews chapter uh, 1, verse number 14. And we don't pray to angels. That's one thing we don't do. Let me take you to the book of Revelations chapter 19. I'm going to show you this, this uh, word here that we get in, in Revelations chapter 19, verse number 10. Here you have John, right, having this encounter with an angel, right? Revelations chapter 19, verse number 10. So John has this encounter and look what happens in Revelations chapter 19, verse 10. John says, And I fell at the, his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant. And of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So you got the... Angel telling John, hey, I'm your fellow servant, right? I'm here to serve also, right? Don't worship me, worship God, right? Because we as people, we like to, you know, put people up on pedestals and, and raise them up, right? And idolize them, right? We have so many forms of, uh, you know, uh, of idolatry today because, you know, when we, when we, uh, how would you say, I'm trying to think of a word when, when, when we admire, you know, somebody, right, we, we tend to put them up, right? And, and uh, you know, we tend to kind of worship them, right? Anybody ever remember the movie Wayne's World? Old movie, right? Wayne's World. If you haven't seen it, it's an old movie probably from the 90s. You got these two young guys who, who uh, you know, were into rock music, and they encountered one of their, you know, uh, 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 rock musician idols. And what's the first thing they did when they encountered this, uh, this, this rock legend idol? They fell to their knees. And what did they start saying? We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Right? Because they had them so elevated. Right? We do that as, as people. And John has this encounter with this angel, and it tells us that he fell to his feet to worship him. But the angel corrected him and says, Nah, I'm your fellow servant. Don't, don't worship me. Worship God. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter number 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
And then some of us think that angels, you know, they look like cute little babies with wings and the bow and arrow, right? We have little, little uh, statues of angels or little decorations, right? You know, and like I said, hey, hey, knock yourself out. But I'm just trying to give you the biblical understanding of what angels are and what they do for you and I. Okay, we're going to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 30. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay. Luke 1, verse 30. Then the angel said to her, to who? To Mary, right? Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Verse 31. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. So what's transpiring here is the angel has been sent to Mary to tell Mary that she's going to be having a child named Jesus. So in this context, the angel is doing what? The angel is delivering a message. And we see that in the Bible over and over again. Angels are used to bring messages. They do many things, but one thing they do is angels bring messages. Right? Did you know the word angel in the Greek actually means messenger? So that's what angel means in the Greek, messenger, right? They bring messages. Let's go to Luke chapter number 2, and we're going here to verse number 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Verse 12. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. So we see the angel bringing the message. Right? So the angels are go hand in hand with our, you know, Christmas celebration. Because what do we celebrate during Christmas? We celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Right? The Christ. Some people also think that Christ is his last name. Right? Jesus Christ. That's his last name. Right? So if you were to see him walking the streets today, you would see him with a jersey and on the back of it it'd say Christ. Right? Because that's his back name. I mean, that's his last name. Or if he got a tattoo on his back, the last name in Old English would be Christ. Because that's what we do, right? We get our last names on our back, right? In Old English, Christ would be Jesus' last name, right? Christ is not his last name. It's a title, the anointed one, amen? Thank you, Lord. Okay, so we see here angel bringing the message to Mary. And then he's being, you know, then after it says that they would find him, right? In swaddling cloths, you know, in a manger, Right? So on and on, we see angels delivering messages. Right? Angels deliver messages. But see, angels do other things as well, besides bring messages. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter number 5. Thank you, Lord. So just keep going to the right of Luke, John, then the book of Acts. We're going to chapter 5, verse 19. Acts 5, 19. It says, the word says, But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the the people all the words of this life. So what's happening here? The angels open up the prison doors for the apostles to be freed. You see that? The angels, right? They're delivering the apostles. So the angels can also help deliver us in times of trouble. Amen? Let's go to the book of Psalms chapter 34. And you thought that all you can do when you're in trouble is call 911. Well, how long are you going to have to wait to get some help when you call 911? It all depends on where you live. Because there's different response times. Amen? Some people may have to wait a little longer than others. But you don't have to just wait on 911. We need to start looking to the Lord when we're finding ourselves in situations. Amen? 
You have something better available to you than even 911. Amen? Let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 34. We're going here to verse number 7. Thank you, Lord. It says, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. They encamp all around. Protection. Amen? How do we know that the, the angels are encamped all around us? Because we can't see them. So you think because you can't see them that they're not there. Do you know how many stories I've heard of, of supernatural things taking place where, where something was going to happen to somebody, but yet at the last minute the, the, the person or people, whatever, backed off and said, oh man, no, we're not going to mess with them. Come to find out later that those people said, we've seen like all these people surrounding them. We're not going to mess with them. Just like the word is saying right here. Right? Let's go to uh, the book of Daniel, chapter number 6. Right? Here we see an example in the book of Daniel of somebody getting delivered from danger, from a problem. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. If you don't know that story, I highly encourage you to read uh, the book of Daniel. Daniel was a praying man. Right? And, and because uh, he prayed, there were some haters out there, uh, uh, you know, trying to do him in. And they got the king to pass a law that said that if anybody prayed other than to the king, because they looked at the king as being a god. If they caught anyone praying to, to anybody or to uh, anybody else besides the king, that that was a, a, a punishable offense that you could be put to death. And he, knowing that, David was praying one day with his window open knowing that people could hear him, but he wasn't going to give in and he wasn't going to compromise. He was still going to pray to God on a daily basis like he always did, knowing that this could land him in jail and even possibly be put to death for praying to God. It sounds so ridiculous, but you know, it just didn't happen during these times thousands of years ago. It's happening today in our world. People are being persecuted for following the Lord Jesus, right? Right? And it's happening here in the United States more and more. Not to the extreme of people being put to death, but by you know, uh, different states trying to pass laws because they don't like what's in the Bible. So they're saying, don't talk about those subjects that are in the Bible because that offends me. We don't ever talk about subjects that are in the Bible to make anyone feel bad because we're all sinners, amen? We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody's perfect. But we as people, what do we do? We categorize sin. We say if you've committed, you know, uh, the little white lie, your, your sin's at the bottom of the list. You're not so bad, right? But if you do these other sins, they're at the top of the list. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's no such thing between being some sin more severe or bad than other sin. The scriptures tell us that all sin is equally the same wrong. It's all, it's all wrong. And there is no worse sin, right? better sin, right? Little white lies. It's all wrong, right? So the point being is this, is that, you know, they're trying to get, you know, force the churches and, and, and preachers to not talk about things that are in the Bible that make people feel convicted. Our, our goal is, our, and our job is not to convict anybody. That's the Holy Spirit's job, amen? But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the truth, but in love, Amen? In love. We're going to encourage people. We're not trying to, you know, throw stones because none of us is perfect. Amen? But we can't ever compromise what the Word of God says. Right? We just can't. Because if, if it's from God, we've got to talk about it. And we can't water it down. Right? We can't water it down. So getting back to Daniel, chapter 6, verse number 22. Daniel was told that he couldn't ta uh, pray to God no more. But he still did it, knowing what could possibly happen. And so he prays to God. They hear him because his window was open. And they and said, you know, we've we, we got to enforce the law. So he, here they, they put him in, in, you know, with some hungry lions. Right? Look at verse 22 of Daniel chapter number 6. They threw him to some hungry lions overnight, and it says, My God sent his angel and shut the lions, plural, right? Shut the lions' mouths 
so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. Amen? Whew. Can you imagine that? Now, we get some crazy people. You ever see these uh, news stories? You know, they go to the zoo and there's the lion's, you know, exhibit. And they get these crazy ideas that they're going to jump in there and go pet the lion. I don't know what these guys uh, have been drinking or what, but leave the lions alone, right? So what did God do for Daniel? He spared them from, he spared them from the hungry lions. But how did he spare them from the hungry lions? Well, the word says he sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. So Daniel was delivered. See, angels not only send us messages, but they can deliver us from harm as well. Something else that angels do, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 22. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 22, we're going to go to verse number 43. Luke 22, verse 43. Look at what the word says right here. Lord. The word says, Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Well, first of all, who did the Lord or the angel appear to? Talking about Jesus. Well, why did an angel need to appear and help Jesus? Well, if you've read this book here, in the book of Luke chapter 22, you have Jesus, he's praying in the garden of Gethsemane, right? So you have Jesus praying. And why is Jesus praying? Because he knows what's about to transpire. Jesus was born for one simple reason, to do what? To die for you and I. That was his, his mission in life was to die for you and I on the cross. He was to take our place. And this is now all starting to culminate, right? And, and he knows the time is near. So, so he's praying in, in the garden of Gethsemane, right? And he knows what's about to transpire. But yet, at the same time, here in verse 23, an angel appears from heaven to strengthen him. You see that? Well, why did Jesus need to be strengthened if he was God in the flesh? Well, we need to understand that although Jesus was God in the flesh, he was all, he was all man, yet all God, there was, a, there was a distinct difference, right? He had divinity, being God, but yet he had humanity, being man. And, and so the thing is this, when he walked this earth as the man Christ Jesus, he didn't use his divinity, right? He, he didn't violate the earth's natural laws, right? So the angels came to do what? To strengthen him. So angels can do what for you and I? They can strengthen us. But are we putting our angels to work? Are we putting our angels to work? Let's go to Psalm 91. And I want to show you something here in verse number 11. This is something that I'm constantly praying all the time. You can pray it as well. I don't have the copyrights to this. This is available to everybody. Use it. Amen? You know, I encourage everyone to learn some scriptures that you can stand on. And what do I mean by that, to stand on? That means that this is what you need to take hold of and exercise your faith that God is going to do this for you. But if you can't, if you don't know what, what the scriptures are, if you don't have any of them to stand on, then, then, you know, you're left to basically pray your own words. And I find that when I pray what the word says, I can't go wrong. And neither can you. So let's go to Psalm chapter 91, verse number 11. And for those of you who don't know, the, this Psalm 91, it talks about protection throughout this whole chapter 91. I encourage you to read it. I encourage you to use it when, when you're going through something and, and you need protection. But look at what verse 11 says. It says, For he shall give his angels charge over you. I pray that. Lord, may your angels have charge over me. 
Or if I'm praying for somebody else, Lord, may your angels have charge over them. Why do we need to pray that? See, because you need to understand how this spiritual system works. See, God's a gentleman. And God does not intervene where he's not invited to intervene. See, so you have to constantly allow him to work on your behalf. And that's why we pray, because we are allowing him to intervene in the situation. Well, pastor, doesn't God know everything? Yes, he does know everything. He's all-knowing. But the point is this, he's given you and I free will. Right? Free will. He leaves it up to us if we want to choose to serve him or not serve him. But when it comes to asking him to intervene in situations, right? When you stand on the word, you can't go wrong. Because his word doesn't return void. Right? That's why we got to stand on the word. It doesn't return void. If he says it, he has to honor it. You know, a beautiful thing I love about our God, the word tells us he's, a man, he's not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he should lie. So in other words, if he said it, he's got to honor it. Amen? I love it. So many people have been attacking God, attacking his word uh, from generation to generation, from the beginning of time. Even Satan himself has tried to twist God's word. I've shared this story from you, uh, with you many times out of the book of Matthew chapter 4. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, and then he's led out to the wilderness to fast for 40 days, meaning not to eat anything. And after those 40 days have come and gone, he's pretty hungry. And then who's right there? Who appears before Jesus after those 40 days of fasting? Satan. And what does Satan do? He comes at Jesus, right? And he says, if you are the Son of God, turn this stone into bread, right? And Jesus replies with the word. He says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word out of the mouth of God. This is what Jesus does. He, he quotes scripture. And then Satan goes on two other times right after to tempt Jesus. But he's twisting scripture as he's trying to do it. And Jesus has to correct him with what the word says. See, because that's what Satan does. He did it in the garden to, to Eve. Remember when he told Eve, why don't you eat from that tree? Well, God said not to eat from the tree. And he said, did God say not to eat from that tree that you you know, would be, your eyes wouldn't be open, right? And be like him. You know, he tries to twist things. And that's why, you know, when the enemy comes and tries to tell us things that are, things that are contrary to what the word of God says, we got to stop it in the tracks and say, well, no, that's not what the word of God says. And even if we, we don't agree with the word of God, that's okay. We still have to say, but that's what God says. So I got to go with it. Right? Got to go with it. Because, you, you, you know, when you, when you allow Satan to get into your head and cause confusion, right, it's not good for, for you. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to be confused. But there is no confusion when it comes to the Word of God. There's no confusion. He spells it out for you and I. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So remember that angels can be used to not only give you messages, they can u be used to strengthen you, they can be used to also uh, um, deliver you, right, from situations. Put your angels to work. you got to learn how to put your angels to work. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, how do we, how do we put our, our angels to work? Right? How do we do it? We, we, just like when you pray to God, you, you got to give your angels instructions. Right? They're ministering spirits. So, how about saying, hey, ministering spirits, you know, I, I, I need some help in this area. Right? Just like we read in Psalm 91, verse 11, that says, He gave His angels charge over you. Right? You say, hey, Lord, 
I thank you that your angels have charge over me. Right? Protection. Before you leave your house every morning, you should be praying that the angels ha are, are, are having charge over you and praying for protection. Say, Lord, as I leave my house today, I thank you when I get in that car or when I, you know, you know when you go on a trip on an airplane or a bus or a train or even if you're going to take off and walk across the street, you say, Lord, I pray that the angels have charge over me, that I walk in protection. Right? So you gotta, you know, you gotta put it out there. Amen? You gotta put your, your angels to work. Right? You gotta put them to work. Because if you don't put them to work, guess what? They, they, they're, they're not, you know, if they have no instructions to work on your behalf, what are they doing? They're just sitting at home in the living room playing Xbox. <laughs> right? They're not doing anything. You gotta put them to work. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 15. So remember, angels are ministering spirits, right? In other words, they, are, they were created to serve you and I, right? When we die, we don't become angels. I, I, I'm sorry that I have to break that news to you. Right? We don't become angels. Our loved ones who die, they are not our angels. God has already created enough you know, uh, spiritual beings to take care of you and I, to watch out over you and I. Right? So here in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 15, we're going here to verse number 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Luke 15, verse number 10. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Do you see that? Did you know that when somebody turns from their worldly ways, what does it mean to repent? Just that. To have a change of mind, right? To turn from your old way of living to turn to a new way of living and living for God. That's called repentance. And the Word is telling us that when one person you know, repents, when one sinner turns from their old ways, that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. There is joy in the, in the presence of the angels of God. In other words, they are, they're excited, they're having a party when one person decides, you know what, I'm going to start living for God and I'm going to do this thing differently. That's how, how powerful it is when one person decides to stop living for, the, for themselves in the way of the world and turns to start living for God. That's, that's, this is big stuff right here. One person. Amen? Just one person. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. So, we need to understand that angels are here and they're assigned for you, to you and I to help us. You know, I used to go to church with a sister that, you know, she, you know, she used to pray. You know, because I know some of us, you know, we like this. Okay, yeah, I'm going to pray Psalm 91, 11. Lord, your angels have charge over me everywhere I go. Lord, your angels have charge over my, my loved ones everywhere they go. You know, you, you, you like that protection thing, but well, angels can do more for you and I. And I knew this sister that, you know, she used to pray. She used to say, ministering spirits, go bring me the money. Where is that in the Bible, Pastor? Do you know the Word of God says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just? Did you know that? See, some people get discouraged. They say, well, look at all them people that are living for, for, for Satan and living for the world. And look at all those millions they got. And they're just partying. And, you know, they're having this, this good old time. And I'm over here. And I'm struggling. And I've been reading my Bible. And I've been praying. And I've been going to church. You're looking at it from a totally different perspective. So you've got to start exercising your faith. You've got to start, you know, walking in faith. Yeah, your circumstances, that may be accurate and true that you know what, that things financially or any other way aren't looking good for you, but the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. So you've got to start seeing in the spiritual realm. See, God you know, is, has already done so much for you and I. You've got to start learning how to start walking in that. Amen? 
and start exercising your faith. But I just want you to know that these angels that we're talking about, they were created for you and I, amen? amen? To serve us. This is what angels are for. They're, they're here to serve us. And I know sometimes, you know, we, we get caught off guard or we think that, you know, we're our back's against the wall and we don't know what to do. We got to start following these biblical principles and we could start getting some better results. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, we, we have to start following these ways of God so that you can benefit from them. Because if you don't use, you know, the tools that God has given you, they just go to waste. They just go to waste. Right? We, you know, we know about God has given everyone here talents and abilities. And if we're not using them, what's happening? They're going to waste. I'm sure everyone here knows somebody, right, who has so much talents and abilities, but they've thrown them away because, you know, they're, they're not using them. Whether they're stuck in addictions, whether they're in jail, whether they've passed away before their time, you know, and you say, man, they were gifted. They were gifted. They didn't use those talents and those abilities, right? Well, you and I have gifts, amen, and we got to put them to work. Otherwise, they don't get used. It's like, it's like you know, having a, a, a bunch of tools in the garage that you never use. They're just there, right? Doing you no good if you don't use them, amen? So we got to start applying ourselves. And, you know, God has used this concept of angels to minister to you and I. You know, God even has a sense of humor. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13 as we start winding down. Well, how does it God have a sense of humor? Let me share this with you. We're going to Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 2. You know, because sometimes God will give us a uh, pop quiz. Anybody know what a pop quiz is? Remember when we were in school? You know, when you show up and you didn't know, but all of a sudden your teacher says, you're going to have this surprise test, right, that... They didn't warn you about it. You're like, I didn't study. I didn't prepare, right? And they want a teacher just wants to test you to see where you're at, to see if you've been, uh, you know, uh, how would you say, uh, holding on to the information that they have been sharing with you, right? So they do this from time to time to kind of just to see where you're at and where they need to adjust in their, their lessons and their instructions. You know, God can do that to you and I as well. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 2. It says, do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, or by doing so, doing some have unwittingly entertained angels. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly, unwittingly entertained angels. So in other words... If you read the context of this scripture, it's talking about hospitality, right? Hospitality was a, was a big thing in biblical times. In other words, if somebody came to your house, you didn't slam the door in their face. That wouldn't be very hospitable, right? Or if somebody came, uh, comes to your house, you don't sit there looking out the window and the curtain and not answer the door like, nah, I ain't answering the door, I'm not here, Right? In these biblical times, hospitality was, was something that, you know, that everyone was expected to, to partake in. If you had a guest come to your home, whether you like them or not, you were going to be nice to them, right? And, and so here it's telling us to, you know, be careful when you entertain strangers because you don't know if you're entertaining angels, so in other words, when you encounter strangers, you know, is it possible that you can be encountering an angel, right? So what would be a good way to treat everyone, right? Treat everyone fair, not just the ones who are dressed nice and smell good. We encounter people sometimes that maybe they're not dressed so nice. Maybe they haven't bathed in a while. 
But does that mean that you and I are to look down at them, right? We've got to treat everyone, right, the same. Because for all we know, you could be entertaining an angel, right? So we have to make it a habit of treating everyone equally across the board. Let's be nice to one another, amen? God is good. I just want to, as we start to, to wind down, is, you know, put your angels to work, right? I showed you in the book of Hebrews, right? And let's go back there as we get ready to close. We're going to go back to Hebrews chapter number uh, 1, verse number 14. I like the version from the New Living Translation that I shared with you, and I'll, I'll read that version again. Hebrews 1, 14. Therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. Angels are sent to planet earth to serve you and I. So are we allowing them to serve us, right? Are we putting them to work on our behalf, right? And this is what I want you to ask yourself and say, man, have I been using my angels you know, or are they just at home getting fat, playing Xbox all day, right? It's like, man, I got to put them to work. Hey, you know, have, have, have they even left the house, you know, in a while, you know? Take them with you when you're, at, when you're going out so they can give you that protection, amen? Take them with you, right? Put them to work. You know, they're here to serve you and I, right? You know, God didn't create angels so that we can just make all these nice little, you know, statues and put them around the house and, you know, decorate, you know. Or put them on our shower curtains, you know, and have that theme in our bathroom, you know, the angel theme, you know, in the room. Let's put them to work, amen? Because they are ministering spirits sent to serve you and I. Oh, thank you, Lord. And what's interesting, and, 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 you know, I love how God always, you know, gives us those examples. And I shared with you how... The angels were sent to Mary to do what? To give her notice, to give her a message that what? That she was going to be carrying a baby named Jesus. And then later on, the angels, you know, sent and, and you know, to send the message that the baby Jesus was born. The list goes on and on. You know, when Jesus went to the cross, so we see that the, the angels were there, you know, to usher in Jesus. But also when Jesus went to the cross and, and he had uh, went uh, uh, to the grave for three days and on that morning, that Sunday morning, when uh, Resurrection Sunday, when he rose from the dead, you know, the, the people went looking for Jesus at the tomb. And what did they find at the tomb? All they found was what? They found two angels that were there in an empty tomb. One was by the, the head of where Jesus would have been laying and one was sitting by the foot of where Jesus would have been laying. And they were there dressed in white, right? So the angels were there to help him as he was going back to, the, to heaven. You know, in the, I believe it's in the book of Luke, the story of the rich man and Lazarus, the poor man, right? And as the Lazarus died, what did the Bible tell us in the book of Luke? That the angels ushered him into the bosom of Abraham. So in other words, what, what are we learning there? Is that when you and I leave planet earth, you know, as some people see pictures and hear stories, people think that when you leave planet earth, that you're going to walk this, this, you know, stairway to heaven, you know, that's got like a million stairs to get to heaven, and you're going to be walking it, you're like, man, how come they never show it with an elevator? I've got to walk this thing, Right? Did you know that when you leave planet earth and, and you get to go and be with our Lord that there's going to be angels to go with you? Just like they were with Lazarus. See, so we are not alone, amen? God has designed some things to help you and I. So I just want to encourage you to understand that you have all these tools at your disposal. Put your ministering spirits to work, right? Right? Put them to work to help you in those areas where you need help because they can also strengthen you just like they did for the Lord Jesus. I don't know about you, but 
I can use some strength from time to time. I can use some help, right? I don't have a S on my chest. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. If I can ask everyone to just bow their heads as we get ready to dismiss, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor. Lord, we thank you that you've created ministering spirits for, for our benefit, Lord. Lord, help us to be mindful that we can put those ministering spirits to work on our behalf. That they can not only bring us messages from you, but they can also strengthen us. They can also protect us. Oh Lord, we thank you. Help us to understand and to utilize these tools you've given us. That our angels that have been assigned to us can actually help us. Lord, help us to put them to work. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you and we give you glory and we give you honor. And as we get ready to dismiss, Lord, we ask that, that you would just send those angels with us to have charge over us, to protect us everywhere we go, Lord. Oh, we thank you that you have assigned not one but many angels, just like Jesus said that he could call legions which is thousands of angels. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that we got numerous angels assigned to us. More than enough to get the job done. So we thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor. In the precious name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen.